for as long as I can remember, if you were a bit strapped for cash but still wanted to get into PC gaming, the meta was to go into an alley and fight some yeah. raccoons for an old office PC like this one. Drop a graphics card into that bad boy and just like that you'd be ready to go onto the internet and yell profanity at strangers in your favorite video game. But there's a pretty big problem with these old alleyway office PCs. They're all from the Intel quad core dark ages, which means they don't have a viable CPU upgrade path beyond just the fastest quad core that happens to go in that socket. And those old quad cores are getting pretty long in the tooth. So I thought it would be interesting to preempt the gaming office PC meta by about six years and bought a brand new office PC for us to gamify. Aw, it's so cute, innocent, and little. But don't worry, little guy, one day you'll also be worth nothing more than a rushed handjob and a couple 20s. Now the tiny little office PC is a brand new, ironically named Dell Inspirion. <laughs> more like, where did I go so wrong in my life that I own one of these, Aron, <laughs> am I right? Which has 13th gen Intel inside. Now, don't get too excited. This specific version is the cheapest one that has an Intel i3-13-100 in it, which is still very much a quad-core CPU, which is the whole point of this video. But don't worry, I did get an upgrade CPU we can drop in later down the line. Now, this spec has a lot of other issues with it. Like, it's just got a disgusting single 8 gig stick of RAM in it and a tiny SSD. But those are all things we can potentially upgrade. In terms of I.O., nothing fancy, but we do get some pretty fast USB, which is nice. Yeah, this system is very much just computer. Uh, on that note, let's see how computer handles gaming before the gamification. Before we start gaming, I just need to do the most important thing, which is delete McAfee. Oh, I, I thought things were going well, and then I touched the mouse, and things clearly weren't going well. Yeah, I was kind of expecting slightly less abominable performance from a newer Intel iGPU. Granted, this is 1080p normal settings in GTA 5, and it is an Intel iGPU with its toes being crushed by single channel RAM, so I guess it was just stupid of me to expect more from it. When it comes to other games, Battlefield 5 flat out refused to associate with the depressor on, Cyberpunk ran like it was recovering from a recent and particularly brutal colonoscopy, and Fortnite could have been worse. So now that we've established the mind-blowing fact that this budget office PC with no graphics card in it struggled to do gaming, let's see how much potential there is to extract from the system once someone finds it in a dumpster seven years from now. Ooh, it's captive, very nice. Whoa, if I was shown a picture of this interior with no context, I would have assumed it's eight years old. The, the internals of the system hasn't changed at all. This is the little Inspirion that I just bought, whereas this is a Dell Optiplex from 2011-ish. And aside from like the blower cooler as supposed to not blower cooler, they do look remarkably similar. Although the main difference that matters to us is that with this system, CPU-wise, we're maxing out at a quad-core 8-thread CPU, whereas with this system, we can drop a 13900K wow. in here. Theoretically, of course. Although in one key area, the new Depressoron is markably worse, where the old Optiplex has a 240 watt power supply in it, not a whole lot, but enough for a reasonable graphics card upgrade. The new Depressoron has to make do with a frankly anemic 180 watts, so yeah, upgrading may get interesting. Oh, and I just noticed that the full-sized PCIe slot's at the bottom, so we're not going to be able to add a dual-slot graphics card in here, which is pretty annoying. Now, because of the design constraints, which I personally feel I can only be reasonably rectified through corporal punishment, this RX 6400 is the most powerful graphics card I can just slot into the system, which is a bummer. I didn't want to use this because I really hope that six years from now, this isn't the kind of low profile graphics card performance we're looking at, uh, but we'll start there. Uh, it kind of looks like I need to Pop the front off. 
So that comes out. A little tray for some extra boomer storage. There's a screw here. Oh yeah, okay. There we go. Oh, this model actually doesn't have a functional DVD drive in it. You have to buy that as an optional extra, which is pretty funny. But anyway, under here we have access to our M.2 storage, so we can drop a full-sized M.2 in here. That's our Wi-Fi card. Luckily, that stuff isn't soldered down. I think the only reason they're not is because that would require Delta redesign stuff. Wow, that is some lowest bidder looking RAM right there, which I'll be replacing with this 32 gig kit that Patriot very kindly sent over because this is a JEDEC kit, which means we'll probably get that 3200 megahertz speed, even if we can't change any settings in the BIOS. Yeah, there we go, that's exciting. Okay, at the same settings as the iGPU, we're running into those fun high frame rate GTA 5 engine stutters, so a lot more performance. Although GTA 5 does still seem unhappy with the fact that we are running a quad core in here, which we'll address later on. Battlefield 5 was not only running, it was running very well at 1080p medium settings. Cyberpunk also recovered from its colonoscopy, and Fortnite was way better. Yeah, Fortnite is very playable with these low settings, although it does seem like the little i3 is becoming a bit of an issue performance-wise, which makes sense, high frame rates bullying CPUs and all that. What I found fascinating was according to Cinebench R20, the i3 in this depressor on is faster than a 7700K, which was the big cojone of the Intel Dark Ages quad cores. And then finally for this configuration, when it comes to a demanding modern game at 1080p low settings, The Last of Us doesn't feel great. Yeah, out here it feels like the system's had a little bit too much tequila and Red Bull to drink. Although, we do have some FSR we can try. Quality FSR? Yeah, that's better. Now it bottoms out at 30 frames per second and it feels a little bit less sluggish. That's cool. Now, like I said before, this is not the configuration I wanted to test because I, I, I'm really hoping that six years from now, we're not dropping RX 6400s into systems like this. So I wanna try the Alpha Chad low profile graphics card available today, which is this RTX 4060. But first we're gonna have to work around some limitations in our depressor on. Now the first problem we need to deal with is overcoming the system's limitations in the girth accommodation department. I'm just gonna use one of these to move the graphics card out of the case. But now when it comes to powering this graphics card, that's where things are gonna start getting really dodgy. Not just because we only have a 180 watt power supply in here, which I don't think is gonna be able to keep up with this graphics card, but we also have to provide the 4060 with a supplemental eight pin power connector, which again, this power supply doesn't have. In fact, the only supplemental power we have available in here is a single SATA power connector that plugs into the motherboard with that connector. Anyway, the reason this is potentially catastrophic is because any 8-pin supplemental power adapter thing worth its salt has two of these connectors. So I'm gonna have to use one of these adapters, which I've used before on the channel and is always a very good idea. Yeah, I'd say this is a very reasonable way to use our little depressor on. Ooh, it's a little bit stuttery, but nothing's exploded yet, which is really exciting. According to MSI Afterburner, we're drawing about as much power as we're gonna get from this power supply, but for now, it's hanging in there. With Battlefield 5 at 1080p ultra settings, we're getting a lot of performance with this system. Especially considering that we still have the quad core i3 in here. We still have a lot of headroom left in the socket. Well, maybe not power supply wise. I think when we drop the i5 in here, things may explode, but we'll see in a second. With Cyberpunk, we had some interesting results. In the canned benchmarks, when you go outside, the CPU has a sudden onset seizure and you get a huge drop in performance, which didn't happen in the normal game for some reason. The Last of Us didn't seem to mind the i3 and ran like a champ, and finally, Fortnite, again because of those high frame rates, was really choking out the little i3. Which I guess means it's time to drop in the 6 core i5 13400, which I don't think is too crazy to expect to work, considering that you can spec it on Dell's website, but that is without the 4060 in the system. Oh, this. Uh... 
Yeah, okay, we're... There we go. Hey look, it's everybody's favorite cooler, the little dumpster special. Interestingly, with Battlefield 5, we barely got any more performance with the i5 aside from some small 1% low improvements, which could be because the CPU couldn't really draw any more power than the i3, and with Cyberpunk, we were still getting the seizures. So now that we've very much run into the limits of that power supply, before we go really crazy with it, I do want to see what happens if we power that RTX 4060 off an external power supply Maybe that'll give us more performance, I'm curious. And I also bought a replacement riser cable for the one I was using, because that one's a loser old PCIe Gen 3, whereas this is PCIe Gen 4, which may also help give us a bit more performance. And just like that, we have everything set up to potentially get the maximum performance possible out of this configuration. We've got our fancy new extension cable, we have some more power coming in from not a loser power supply, no, I'm curious to see. Let's see what it does. A few moments later. Wow, that very much did nothing. Uh, which I guess means it's time for us to finally get stupid with it. I'm sure this is exactly what Dell had in mind when designing the little depressor on. CPU-wise, we have an i9-13900KF in here to demonstrate the full power of this platform, and then we had to add some slightly beefier cooling to it because, you know, it's a big-ass CPU. I also put this fan over here just to help cool the power delivery and stuff because it does have quite a bit more to deal with. And there is an additional CPU 4-pin power, which means we can offload some of the very high power draw of this 13900KF onto this power supply over here. But what I'm the most excited about is this Sakura waifu card that Yeston sent over for a video. It is an RX 7800 XT and it is magnificent. It even smells very nice. There's like a bit of perfume on it, which means that my whole office now smells of Sakura, which, you know, it's not a bad thing. And that's also gonna be majority powered by the external power supply. I really tried to offload as much work as possible from this 180 watt power supply that comes in the system. But with that, let's fire it up and see what kind of performance we get. Wait a minute, the CPU is still just drawing like 70 watts, which is way less than the TDP of the 13900K. That's not a problem I was anticipating. So I downloaded Intel's XTU to try and get the motherboard to loosen up a bit. That is a little bit better. But despite me setting the power limits in XTU to 220 watts, the motherboard doesn't seem to want to give it more than 100 watts, which isn't even the base TDP of the 13900KF. So that CPU isn't being allowed to stretch its legs in the way that it would want to. I mean, this is a CPU that likes to draw well over 200 watts under load. So there really isn't much of a point dropping an i9 into the system, even if it does technically support it. Having said that, we did get a jump in performance, but not nearly as much as we would have liked. Cyberpunk did run a decent bit better, partially due to the lack of seizures in the baked-in benchmark, and due to the GPU-boundness of Cyberpunk. Ooh, in The Last of Us, with 1080p ultra settings, we're getting over 100 frames per second, and look at how smooth that frame time graph is. This game doesn't seem too phased by the fact that that Intel CPU isn't getting that much power sent to it, uh, which makes sense considering that we're not pumping out super high frame rates. So at the end of the day, seven years from now, if you find one of these Inspirions in a dumpster, don't drop a used i9 into it. You're very much not gonna utilize that CPU, but at least you will be getting better performance than you'd get from a dumpster PC today. So, you know, a bit of progress good. And it brings me to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for a 53% higher chance of finding a dumpster Optiplex. And until the next video, bye-bye.